Indie games are the, like the coolest rebels of the gaming world. They're shaking things up with awesome titles that are actually fun to play, affordable, and without a million microtransactions trying to nickel and dime you. But in the past few years, indie games have exploded, and honestly, they are often a way better buy than most super hype AAA games. Today, I'm sharing some of the indie RPGs that I've currently been obsessed with as of lately, some fresh out of the ovens while others are a bit more seasoned but still incredible. These are the games you definitely gotta grab if you wanna just hop on an epic adventure, you know, without worrying about you just got robbed by spending $70 on a game and it being not up to fluff as what you would think. This one's a little bit more on the fresher side, but this brand new title just launched and is already a top contender for my indie game of the year. Remember those awesome like Ori games? Well, the same devs, Moon Studios, are behind no rest for the wicked. They're aiming to bring a fresh spark to the ARPG genre. Essentially, the best way to look at it is Soulsborne meets ARPG. Imagine a more grittier, isometric world that blends Path of Exile with Dark Souls. This ain't your typical fast-paced ARPG. No Rest is all about that slow, methodical strategy, right? Enemies are smart and quietly unforgiving. I've died many times either from A, the environment, or overall just fighting them, fighting the enemies. And let's just say they definitely put you in very 1v3 situations a lot, and you really got to pay close attention to the parry window. Overall, it is pretty much a lot of things that you would expect from a Swordsborne game. Even the bosses pack a punch making every fight feel very tense and rewarding overall of course the game is in early access so it's not a fully fledged game like right out the get-go it definitely still has its issues but for 35 dollars, it's not bad another key thing i want to talk about norris and wicked is the overall exploration it's another big highlight the world itself is completely handcrafted by far have some of the best visuals i've seen in an uh, indie game in a minute not procedurally generated either so basically every single nook and cranny every corner that you come around feels very unique to its own way without just trying to stitch together a bunch of assets and you know just randomizing it climbing vines and exploring hitting nooks for a loot adds another layer of fun like i said the game is in early access for 35 dollars but no rest for the wicked is a easy steal and the devs are actively listening to the community with the frequent updates that they have been you know issuing ever since the game's initial launch last epoch is another fantastic arpg but with a heavy focus on replayability and customization your hero journeying through time on the world of Viterra, battling a mysterious force called the void now this game just left early access in february and let me tell you it definitely does stand toe to toe it might just be better than diablo 4 and it's way cheaper there are five unique classes to choose from, each with its varying skill set and play style as well. You can further personalize that character with the gear and the different ability combinations. And of course, the coolest part that I've currently found was that Atera is split between multiple timelines, therefore allowing you to be able to jump between them to discover new enemies, bosses, and loot. And there's also a huge in-game content at the end of the game, keeps players busy, the arenas, the dungeons, the uh end of time part of that aspect like there's so much to do last epoch is a blast to play for also 35 dollars though there are quite a few bugs here or there especially when it came to the co-op mode that i've experienced overall the exploration is fantastic it's vast it's very diverse world as many many things inside each and every kind of like that kind of like norris and wicked is everything is like there's so many secrets and loot and so much that to come across the time travel mechanic as well as another layer of intrigue letting you explore different eras and just getting all types of loot from those and fighting all the different variations of the monsters and it's overall not bad for what it is and for all the content that i've received in last epoch within all the characters and how diverse each uh class is and it could turn into like three other classes depending on which archetype you choose especially after how diablo 4 had its fair share of uh, problems back in last year when it released for 35 dollars save yourself a couple you know that best bang for your buck arpg you definitely can't beat last epoch for sure now look i love blaze blue alongside the classics like king of fighters street fighters and mortal kombat so when i heard that they were releasing a 2d side-scrolling blaze blue roguelike on steam 
I jumped on it faster than you can say white or rice in a glass of milk and a paper plate in a snowstorm. Shout out to anybody who actually knows that reference because I love that movie. But Blaze Blue Entropy Effect lets you choose between eight iconic Blaze Blue characters. Yes, playing this, well, technically, no. Playing this game does not mean you need to play the fighting games. This game is completely separated. It's just utilizing the same universe. And one of the uh, main characters, or iconic characters, is the uh, dual wielding badass Hibiki. Uh, as a roguelike itself, it has all of the classic features that comes with playing roguelikes. There's permadeaths, there's power-ups between the rounds. You can shop to upgrade your character. You can choose these bonuses that the game costs potential to further enhance your combat style or the exchange points for extra health or XP. The game is perfect blend of people who are familiar with Blaze Blue action with the addictive qualities of a roguelike. And it's also good for people who are just looking for a new roguelike to play. Like I said, it does not matter do if you played the fighting games or not. Like the game will definitely get you well versed or well introduced into with the world and the characters and so on and so forth. So if you're looking for a fresh take on that Blaze Blue universe, this is definitely worth checking out for only $20. Now, Power World is the latest craze from Pocket Pair. Let me tell you, the hype is literally real. This early access game blends creature taming, survival, resource management into a very unique and quirky experience pretty much think pokemon meets stardew valley but with a much darker edge the core gameplay revolves around befriending or capturing depending on your overall moral compass these adorable pal creatures unlike the gentle pokeball approach power lets you take a more aggressive approach depending on how you want to go about it but they still have these similars of course it had its own problems back when it first came out whether it was completely copyright and so on and so forth but if you just take the game as is the world may be familiar to pokemon fans but power pretty much carves its own niche with its dark humor and unique mechanics the charming visuals the ethical dilemmas surrounding the pal treatment and the overall blend of mechanics make power world a quite an interesting experience it is currently free on the Game Pass, or you can get that thirty dollars on Steam. Just know if you play the Game Pass variation, you cannot use uh, you cannot create your own server. If I'm not mistaken, I think when you buy the Steam version, you can definitely make your own servers, and all your friends can join your server, and so on and so forth. Okay, okay, all right, all right. With this entry, just know, just know, Sea of Stars technically did come out in 2023, but this gem deserves another shout out developed by sabotage studios the same folks behind the messenger this game is an overall love letter to the golden age of jrpgs back in the 90s sea stars really showed what sabotage studios was really made of sea stars is a narrative driven rpg with beautifully crafted visuals and the nostalgia of pixel graphics this is a game about two warriors who were born on the summer and winter solstice that are magically enhanced beings that are fated to fight these lovecraftian s monsters named dwellers but trust me, there's a lot that happens, a lot more than what you would think. But I save the story for people who actually want to just like hop in. But the story gets crazier and crazier. And overall, in this game, you can pretty much choose to be control either the protag protagonist. You will simply explore the world of Sea of Stars with this top-down isometric view that most players will be used to if you played anything in the 90s, any JRPGs in the 90s that will make you feel overall comfortable with that. Uh, the true overall testament goes to the combat. Now, I do like playing games uh, to most people who play like turn-based games that are more interactive, like Legend, Legend of Dragoon or Vagrant Story and many others that you can think of, like maybe even Parasite Eve. Uh, those type of games that you could do a lot more, like it's partially turn-based, but partially not. But you can pretty much control how much damage you can output, basically making you actually have to focus and lock in when you're in your turn based modes you can pretty much dictate how much damage that you would do and or how much damage you can defend against by just timing the uh the action button and timing it right to count as a parry or to to add extra damage but it all comes down to a skill or timing issue but sea of stars is currently free on the game pass or you can also snag it on steam for 35 dollars
Now, there's definitely more indie RPGs out there, and there are just as great, but these five so far have been my current addiction. That was just hard for me to honestly put down. Indie games are really disrupting the entire flow of the gaming industry, bringing great games to the players at great prices. Lack of microtransactions, overall better or more intuitive gameplay. The last few years, we have seen almost a resurgence of some sorts, and any games are becoming a much better buy than most AAA games. Let me know if you play a lot of indie games and have you been having a better time playing them other than some of the more unfinished AAA games. I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter of indie games versus AAA. Subscribe for more RPG content, like the episode as well, or maybe send this video to a friend who's looking to have good, uh, you know, indie games to play. And as always, stay safe. It's been your host, Chaos DTV, here at Chaotic Inc. Signing out. Peace.